ninety and nine that safely lay in the shelter of the fall. But one was out on the hills away, far off from the gates of gold. Away on the mountains wild and bare, away from the tender shepherd's care. Away from the tender shepherd's care. There were ninety and nine that safely lay in the shelter of the fold. But one was out on the hills away, far off from the gates of gold. Away on the mountains wild and bare, away from the tender shepherd's care. Away from the tender shepherd's care. Lord, thou hast here thy ninety and nine. <laughs> The shepherd made answer, this of mine has wandered away from me. But though the road be rough and steep, I go to the desert to find my sheep. I go to the desert to find my sheep. There were ninety and nine that safely lay in the shelter of the fold. But one was out on the hills away, far off from the gates of gold.
too early. Oh, no, not at all. Grace is still getting ready. Is she the pet? <laughs> Sweet. Thought we'd just go into the room and have a cup of tea first. Thank you very much. Your garden is looking lovely. Oh, it's been a good year for the garden. Now you just go on up there. What a pleasant room. Of all our homes were as comfortable as yours, Mrs. Broom. Oh. oh, there's nothing quite like a country upbringing. All that fresh air and space. Well, we've over 40 acres of it anyway. Mm. I passed a large tent on my way here today. Oh, they're the evangelists. James is letting them have the use of the field for the month. One of the young men comes up for milk. It's nicely spoken and mannerly. Mm. If only more of his generation were that way disposed, Mrs. Frew. Yes, indeed. That's why it's so comforting to know that one of our own wee girls has found such a Christian home. Well, we try to do what's right. Mind you, it's not always easy. The same old problem. Hi. No improvement in the speaking. No. Well, that is disappointing. We'll have her in here in a wee moment, shall we? Tell me, are the tantrums as violent as they were? Oh, no, that has passed. I mean, you've got to put your foot down when it comes to pure temper. Oh, indeed you have. My husband's inclined to be a shade more lackadaisical about such matters. Then men, you know what they're like? <laughs> Quite. No, it's her attitude that's so trying. As if we weren't good to her. I mean, what more should a young girl like her expect out of life? Come in. Grace, let me tell you a little story. It's about a girl just a little bit older than yourself. And she also had the good fortune to find two good people willing to take her into their home and treat her as their very own. Now, the girl in our story, I'll call her Betty. Now, Betty, when she left us, was a modest and decent young person. We were all delighted for her good fortune. And so she set off with her new foster parents for her new start in life. But now comes the sad part of the tale. Just a week ago, I went to visit Betty in her new home. But oh, what a difference. Her manner so brazen, so knowing. Her head was full of nothing but pleasure, dancing and cheap music. She had become a stranger, both to her foster parents and to their principals. Those two good people who took that girl into their home, fed and clothed her, took her on holidays to the seaside bought her a brand new bicycle for her birthday only last year. Made one great mistake. They spoiled her. They spoiled that girl. And now they regret it. But it's too late, Grace. Now, I'm sure you don't wish to end up like that, do you? Do you? This time forward, I want to hear from Mrs. Frew here of a happy and contented young miss going about her wee everyday tasks with a smile. Because, you know, that can make such a difference. I'm sure you can smile, eh? There, you see. Now, you won't let us down, I know. Well, Mrs. Frew, I think Grace can run along now, don't you? Yes. You heard the lady. Back to your business, my girl. No! <laughs> oh, dear! <laughs> no! She wants to keep her good dress. No! 
Mrs. Prue, with your permission, perhaps she could keep a good dress on today and have a little holiday. Very well. You can keep your good dress on this once, provided you don't soil it, mind. Now run along with you. Like our tent then. It's all right. Come on in. He won't mind. Welcome to our canvas cathedral. Do you smell it? And the grass? Better than any old church, huh? Hmm? I've seen you, haven't I? That's right. This morning. The pretty milkmaid. I thought so. What do they call you, then? Mia. Grace. Lonely, huh? Yeah. I bet. Living out here in the country. Nothing but cows. <laughs> Will you keep them out of the field for me? Will you do that? They can make an awful mess, you know. How old are you? Fourteen? Mm. I thought so. Big girl for your age. It's a pretty dress you have on, too. Did you fall? Excuse me, I'm not being very gentlemanly. My name is George. Would you care to have a pew? Well, Grace. 
You don't say very much, do you? Do you like music? Our kind of music. Happy music. Uh, let's see. Yeah. You know this one? Everyone knows this. I'm H-A-P-P-Y. I'm H-A-P-P. I am disappointed. I am. Not trying. Not trying one little bit. Good, isn't it? Come on. Come on. Come on, shake it. Okay. I'm H-A-P-P-Y one more time with the tambourine. You ready? One, two, three, four. I'm H-A-P-P-Y. I'm H-A-P-P-Y. I know why I'm, I'm sure I am. I'm H-A-P-P. Your turn. I'm... That's it. I know I am, I'm sure I am, I'm H-A-P-P. One more time! H-A-P-P-Y, I'm H-A-P-P. I'm sure I am, I'm H-A-P-P-Y. Yeah, that's better. We'll have you dancing next. Do you do any dancing? Huh? Dancing, huh? Come on. Do you do any dancing? Uh-huh. Devil's music, huh? Yeah, I know. Okay, Grace, let's go. Come on. That's it. Come on, shake it. Come on, Grace. Come on. Woo! Come on, Grace. Uh, I think you'd better go now. Thanks, Grace. Thank you. No, 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 not that way. I'll show you a better way. A private way. Come on. So we'll see you tonight, 8 o'clock. I'll be looking out for you. Now remember, Grace. Joy bells. Joy bells, Grace. Burns bull after you. You're all in a sweat. What is it? Whatever it is, you can tell me, can't you? And up to you. We have seen it then, have you? Sure, you're only a baby. My baby. Your nice new dress. She won't be happy, you know. P-P-Y. Huh? P-P-Y. No, I don't want to Oh, that's it, is it? P-P-Y. Well, what's the harm in it if it makes you happy? But your dress. And you can't very well go looking like that now, can you? Everybody else will be in their best. You know that, don't you? Well? Yeah? Mm. Good girl. And Grace... Don't let you know who see you in that state when you get back to the house.
friends. And now I'd like to introduce you to the man I know you've all come to listen to tonight. And that is Pastor Eric Kells. Eric. Brothers, sisters, it's good to see so many new faces here this evening. And to you, and you, and you, and you, my friend, I tell you now that this may be the most important evening you've ever spent. Here in our tabernacle, pitched under the Lord's heavenly roof, with nothing between him and all of us but that thin skin of canvas up there. I want you to think of that now, of those powerful rays of salvation striking down from the mercy seat. I want you to feel those rays. I want you to feel them burn. Because, dear friends, I tell you in all sincerity, if you don't experience those heavenly rays, then I'm afraid you'll be stoking up for yourself another and much more terrible temperature. <laughs> oh, my dear friends, we live in a sinful age, an age of beastliness and false prophecies that spread and multiply amongst us like some terrible growing thing, and the fruit they bring forth is at first bite so sweet and so tempting to the taste, it's hard to resist them. Shh. I see many young people here tonight. And to you I say, don't eat from that tree. Don't dance to the devil's hornpipe just because some cynic did once say he has all the best tunes. Friends, I'm here among you tonight on a very special mission. I'm here because 100 years ago, this very year, something wonderful took place right here in this peaceful corner of County Antrim. I wonder how many of you can tell me of that amazing time. 1859, friends. The year of grace and the air filled with singing. to rekindle that flame. Help me to raise that wind once again into a hurricane force. Let the Lord Jesus into your cold and shattered hearts. Friends, Friends, I'm, I'm sure you've all enjoyed the uplifting playing of our young friend here. <coughs> George McQuiston, brothers and sisters, has the Lord Jesus in his heart. But there was a time when that smiling young man you see before you now, so firm in his Redeemer's love, followed a very different path. I want him to tell you his story. Take my words for it, friends. His testimony is a truly marvelous one. George. Thank you, Eric. <clears throat> friends, do you know what the word spotless means? It means without a mark, without a blemish. Pure as the driven snow washed whiter than white. And friends, the only detergent proper for the purpose is the blood of our Savior, Christ Jesus, I tell you. Friends, you know, before I discovered that laundry of love, I had as many marks, as many blemishes, as many stains, as many spots on my character as the next man. For more, more, much, much, much more. Friends, before I discovered that laundry of love, I smoked. 
I drank alcohol. I gambled. I spent my money on all these things and on other things that I would be too ashamed even to mention to you here tonight. I cheated. I lied. On one occasion, dear friends, I even stole. You know, I broke my poor old mother's heart. But one day, friends, as I was walking through the city, much the worst for wear, I heard a question. And that question was one that I had never asked myself before. It seemed as if the voice was speaking directly to me, specifically to me, George McQuiston. It was a very simple question, friends. The question was, are you free from sin? Are you free from sin? And friends, the man who asked that question is here in the tent with us tonight. There he sits, friends, and I am going to ask him to put that self-same question to you so that you can ask yourself tonight, are you free from sin? Are you free from sin? Because friends, dear friends, you can be, you can be, you can be, you can be, you can be. Amen. Praise the Lord. Just, just feel the power contained in these three little words. Stronger, infinitely stronger than any man-made megaton bomb. Let them pierce your hard hearts. Those blackened layers of stony indifference. Yes, now, dear friends, I hear a question. I hear it so plain, oh, so very plain. What shall I do to be saved? What shall I do to be saved? Praise the Lord. What shall I do to be saved? Lord, Lord, breathe your heavenly oxygen into me. Fill these human lungs with the breath of the gospel message so that your humble servant may lead these people to the blessed state of salvation. Amen. Hear me, O oh Lord. Hear this message to the mercy seat, I beseech thee. And let any six men try and pray me down. I have the Lord Jesus in my heart. Have you? Hallelujah. Have you? Praise be to God. And now, dear friends, I'm going to ask you, in spite of your sins, to get up out of your seats and come forward and say, I want to know my soul is saved. I want to know my soul is saved. And friends, you're not coming to me. I'm a sinner just as you are. You're coming to the Lord Jesus. Friends, come forward and join me.
more holidays for you, my girl. Back to porridge. Rest yourself. You're sweating. Grand little helper, sure enough. But not so much of the little, eh? A young woman before we know. No more baby talk, eh? That day when you arrived with your wee suitcase, I'll never forget the look in your face. Ah, sure. This world can be a hard place. For some of us. Do you understand? Ah, uh, how could you? Listen, Gracie, to me. You take any enjoyment you can, while you can. We're not animals, you know. We don't have to spend our lives in this. You've done enough for one day. Away you go. Out into the fresh air. Well, go on, go on. There's mushrooms in the big field. I saw them this morning. Well, go on, away you go.
For this beautiful spread the good Lord has placed on our table this mealtime, we give grateful thanks. Amen. I said grace. <laughs> I don't know which of you two is the bigger fool. I'm not sure. What harm is there in innocence? There's little enough of it about. More like simple-mindedness, if you ask me. I don't care for that expression. And I won't hear it used in front of her. Don't devour your food like that. Let her leave the table. Go ahead, Grace. I get no cooperation from you. None whatsoever. It's not everybody, you know, would take a problem child into their own home. Problem child? Thwarted at every turn. All those fairy tales you tell her. When that same girl remains in my care, I'm determined that she'll be protected from herself. With or without any form of assistance from you. Protected from herself? That child up there? I happen to know that that child, as you persist in calling her, had a vile beginning in life. Her father was probably an American. A serviceman and a drunkard. Her own mother abandoned her when she was barely two years Keep of age. Keep all that to yourself, woman. You and your fine Miss Hogg in her wee fold car. Home truths bite hard. You never did have any stomach for the like. Nor for this either. There are those who'd be glad to lick where it lay. Woman, 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 would you quit? Grace. What's this? Ten. Happy. No. Once was enough. It was you who persuaded me to set foot in that low-class performance in the first place. Ten. Ten. No. No is right, my girl. There'll be no repetition of that spectacle, thank you very much. You go upstairs and change those clothes. Ten. No, Grace, maybe we'll go another night. We will not. Oh, the riffraff of the countryside there. You see, the stitch is in, I warned you. Now, 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 Grace, now behave yourself, now behave yourself, Grace. Grace, Grace! There'll be grief in this house before the summer's out. You see if I'm not proved right.
<clears throat> My friends, not so long ago, I happened to watch a young man on television. He was singing what I could only describe as some sort of jungle rhythm. He moved his body and his limbs lewdly. His name, they tell me, is Elvis Presley. Oh, my friends, I pray that it is not too late for that young man to recognize the great sin that he commits each time he shakes his lower limbs to inflame those who pay money to witness his shame. Uh, something of the same spirit seems to be abroad in our own small community in a tent, as it so happens, not so very far from where we are gathered at this moment. Now, I must admit that I personally have not been to this crusade, as they call it, but I have been hearing disturbing accounts of what has been taking place there. Scenes of emotion are, I understand, a regular nightly occurrence. People breaking down, weeping, confessing their sins, begging to be saved. Much noise and more than a fair share of hysteria. I have even heard of the case of one unfortunate woman barking like a dog. but I'm sure she's not a member of this congregation. Oh, my friends, although the scriptures do tell us that the Lord's house is a place of many mansions and that we are free to worship him under any sort of roof, that does not give man license to dispense entirely with the old forms of worship or to invent new ones just for the sake of sensationalism. For make no mistake about it, that is what some of you have been witnessing in that revival tent in James Frew's field. Sensationalism, pure and simple. Sensationalism imported from the United States of America. But just because something may be all the rage in Texas or in Tennessee does not mean that it is suitable or even acceptable in this peaceful corner of ours of County Antrim. No. I say no, just as I say no to so many other lurid imports from Hollywood or Tin Pan Alley. And dear friends, here in this fine old Presbyterian church where generations have come to worship and will continue doing so to the glory of God's will, I ask you from the bottom of my heart to join with me in saying no also. A resounding no to this crude and dubious enterprise. Let us praise the Lord in the words of Psalm 100, which we will sing to tune 15, the old hundred. All people that on earth do dwell, sing to the Lord with cheerful voice. Mm -hmm. All people that on earth do dwell, sing to the Lord with cheerful voice. Come, soft as a breath, 
notice the Redeemer's breath flowing gently. Oh, my friends, it can come like a tornado raging through the blood. You'll know when it comes. You'll know. <laughs> You'll know all right. For well, the wind bloweth where it listed. Thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell where it cometh and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Friends, listen to that wind. Isn't that a sign? Well, isn't it? <laughs> and it's fashionable in these cynical days to scoff at the idea of hell. Hell is not an idea, take it from me in that book there. Hell is a reality, a reality well documented. I could go through the alphabet tonight, friends, letter by letter, and find word after word to describe that place. Hell is a place of agony. It's a place of abomination, a place of affliction, a place of base betrayal place of brimstone, a place of contention, canker, and a cloven hoof, a cesspool. Hell is a place of distress, disgust, dirt, and damnation. Grace, I know you're in there. Have you this door locked? James? I'm sure you've noticed that there's someone absent tonight. Someone greatly missed. I apologize for our young friend not being up here on the platform beside me. But if he's not here in the body, I'm sure he is in the spirit. However, we shall carry on the good Lord's work without the benefit of his music and without his equally inspiring testimony. Where three or four are gathered together in my name. Now, at this point, dear friends, I wonder whether there's any amongst us tonight who's felt his or her heart grasped in the Lord's mighty vice. How could she do such a thing? You drove her too hard, and that's why never off her back. You make a laughing stock out of us. That girl's capable of anything, I tell you, I know it. She's got bad blood in her. In front of all that riffraff and that tent out there. On our land. Grace is a good girl. I won't hear anything different, so I won't. Oh, James Frick. All our married life has been the same. A blind eye and a deaf ear. Look at you. You're not the man I married. This place would be in the same sorry state if it wasn't for me pushing you day and night. I have two of you to contend with. You and that girl. Tired of it all. Do you think I never get tired? We all get tired. Look at my hands. Go on. Look at them. I'll find her, I tell you. She's got bad blood in her. Not one soul? Surely there must be one amongst you crying out for release. Not one among you with a tale of shame to tell. Praise the Lord. I was a drunkard. Spirits and wine. Friend. 
Is there any hope of redemption? Good Lord turns no one away from his table. Praise the Lord. But you are intoxicated, friend. I know. If you want to take that closer walk with your savior, cast that poison cup from your lips before it's too late, my friend. Friends, there's a limit even to God's patience. Friends, don't be found wanting when that time comes. Friends, come to your savior before it's too late. Come now. 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 Come, child. Tell you'll go in the morning. If you don't move them, James, I'll call in the police to do it. Ah, woman, give my head peace. James! Not here, go away. Oh, no. See for yourself, he's gone. Flown to pastures new. Left us all behind, dear. Bound to happen. What? girl who came forward tonight, aren't you? Yes? Oh, no, surely he didn't. Not you. Look, come on, come 
inside. Come on. Come on. <sighs> Sit down. Forgive the mess. A great man behind the scenes. Well, it's quite modest, really, for such a great man. Like a, like a cabin at sea. Billow tossed, tempest and calm. Uh, it's all over now, though. He won't be back, not this time. Listen, no, 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 keep calm, sit down. There's no point in getting upset, sit down. Once again, pardon the disarray. Let me tell you something about Master George. That's him there. That's the two of us together. Burnham on the Sea, 1955. Oh, a great catch of souls that year. Shoals and shoals of them jumping into our nets. That's when I first discovered his little weakness. One little fishy wasn't enough for Master George afterwards. Oh, no. Still, there's a certain way with him, isn't he? The sitting there with his little organ. Right away. Oh. You're shocked at this. The devil's buttermilk. None of us are perfect. We try, we try. Even George, I suppose, in his own way. Let me show you something else. These all his, his vein. <laughs> yes. Two things go together, they do. I bought him all these and all his records. This one was his favorite. I did this this morning. None of us is perfect. No, 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 don't go. I want to try and explain something to you. Try. We do, and we do good work. <laughs> not all the time, not this time, but other times, other places. Good, good work. The Lord's work. You do understand that, don't you? What's the matter? Can't you speak? You know, we've had miracles. Oh, yes, many times. We used to keep the hearing aids and the crutches afterwards. And the speaking with tongues. Oh, a lot of that. And... Why did he have to go? George of little faith. We could have done great things here, I know it. It's not too late. I've still got the power in me. I, I feel it. I feel it at this very moment. I, I mean, or maybe this was meant. Maybe it was meant as a test of my faith. Oh, Lord. Lord. Take these hands, oh, Lord. Lay them on this poor dumb girl that she may receive your healing charge. Pass thy heavenly voltage through this humble transformer. No. Do it right now! No! 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 Come back, come back! You don't understand! They never do.
Well, I've seen her, and uh, she seems a lot calmer now. Much calmer. I can understand your distress, but try to realize that this is a sensitive age for Grace. She's, well, on the brink of womanhood, and strange things can and often do occur, you know. We can only be thankful that the unsettling influences have been removed. I'm sure their intentions were good, but... <laughs> you know, our own old-fashioned ways have stood the test of time. Haven't they now, eh? Aye, they have. That's right. Now, you have nothing to reproach yourselves with, believe me. Grace will be her old self again in no time at all. You'll see. You'll see. And now, let's just bow our heads for a moment in prayer. O oh Lord, from whom no things are hidden, look down upon this house and upon your servants, James and Elizabeth Frew, and upon Grace, and help them in this time of trial. I will be done. Mm -hmm. 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 Mm -